There's a new update with the story out of Dayton, Ohio with Connor Betts as he went on a rampage and ended up killing nine people. Well, the update is that his friend actually helped him stockpile the weapons and his friend, let's put the picture up, this black gentleman here got arrested. Now let me tell you the backstory of all of that. So the guy's name is Ethan Colley. Okay. Now he was questioned by the FBI and the, he actually bought the weapons for Connor Betts. Okay. But he didn't get arrested for that as of yet, but he was arrested on a unrelated count of lying to purchase a gun for himself. Okay. So Connor Betts couldn't get that body armor that he had or that hundred round drum. This guy, Ethan Collie decided to do that. Now during the FBI interview, Collie said he bought and stashed the items for Betts at his apartment to help Betts hide them from his parents. Wait a minute. Hold on. Connor Betts was a loser grown man living with your mama. Oh Lord. Betts even came over to Collie's apartment to assemble a pistol several months before the massacre, according to the complaint. Now, Bess legally purchased the AM-15 pistol using an attack. Authorities previously said the pistol is short barrel than the AR-15 rifle variant. It said, but uses the same ammunition and magazines. Attached to Bess pistol was the magazine Kylie purchased capable of holding 100 rounds of ammunition. Betts wore the body armor his friend bought. Now, Kylie told authorities he had known Betts since 2014 when they used marijuana and acid together four to five times a week. Now, looking at this Ethan Kylie guy, and I could be wrong, it's just speculation. He got that look like he don't really be around black people too much or didn't grow up around black people because most black people don't be using no acid. We, yeah, they, they do that. You know, I don't do it. That's why I said they, um, but acid, that's not a normal thing that black people would do normally. Now I say, despite his history of drugs, including the 2013 guilty plea for marijuana possession, Kylie allegedly answered no to a question about an unlawful drug use on a form he filled out to purchase a handgun in May. So they stated that Kylie allegedly told the authorities he lied because if he told the truth about the drug use, he would not be allowed to purchase a firearm. Well, that's correct. So it's a FBI and ATF agents say they observed drugs in his apartment when Kylie consented to a search. So they about to get you for, for narcotics. They don't get you for nothing else. So when inside the apartment, the agents may have marijuana observed in plain sight paraphernalia consistent with smoking marijuana, including what appears to be a bong, an FBI agent wrote in the criminal complaint. Now, Kylie allegedly said he smoked marijuana every day for the last decade and grew mushrooms at his house that he microdoses for energy. Now, they said Betts arrived in Dayton's downtown Saturday night uh, in his father's car with his younger sister, Megan, and another male friend. And police said about an hour after entering the bar with the duo surveillance camera showed Betts walking out by himself. About 45 minutes later, Betts returned to the bar and fairly shot his sister, wounded his friend outside. Then of course, you know, all the things that we saw. So let me tell y'all something. Learn something from these stories that we are doing. I have a thing about doing things for other, or buying things for somebody or letting someone use certain things that are mine that they shouldn't be doing. For instance, when somebody come up to you and say, Hey, could you buy a gun for me? First thing you ask, like, why don't you buy your own gun? Man, I can't buy a gun. <laughs> Man, you better fix your problem so you can go buy one. Could you buy me some ammunition? Why can't you buy it? Oh, well, I can't do it. Well, maybe you shouldn't be having it. That's the attitude you got to have because as you can see, you buy someone ammunition, they go out and commit a domestic terrorism act. Here come the FBI and ATF at you. The guy didn't do it, but Connor did. So you know good and well, they go, and I got something to say about that too, but let me continue. If someone asks you, could you co-sign on, on me with, with a car, or could you co-sign with an apartment, co-sign with this, co-sign with that, like that old commercial, no, 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 brother. You got to, or sister, 
you got to get your own. Y'all, those in my age group, you know about that commercial from back in the day. If you messed up your credit, why would I take a risk of putting my name on there for you? Well, I didn't mess up my credit. I just don't have enough credit. Well, you better go get you um, one of those uh, cards and put money on it, whatever you got to do as a starter card to build some revolving credit because I'm not going to put my name on the line when I took care of my credit. Like, no, not at all. Certain people, you don't need to allow them to stay in your house. If they drug users, they always drunk. They don't, they do things that against the law. Don't let them in your house because what, when the FBI and ATF start coming because they was in your house, you get what I'm saying? You got to really watch the, the company that you keep. Like the old school people say, watch the company that you keep. Now, if this guy wasn't fooling with Connor and, and buying weapons for him, he wouldn't be caught up like this. And now let me get to the last part. And I'm always, this is to you brothers that's on these streets. And some of y'all are in games. You remember the Me Too movement when it first came out? And the Me Too movement was going after a lot of rich and powerful white men. And about a good year, they were knocking them down left and right, the Me Too movement. What happened after that year, black men? They start coming after you, left and right. And all of a sudden, they just forgot about all these rich and powerful white men. Epstein was still running around doing the things that he was doing, right? But forgot all about all that and came after you. The first target was Bill Cosby. They did a whole thing on R. Kelly, which R. Kelly needs to be locked up for the things that he's done. Nobody's defending him. But they started trying to make the black man, which is, if you know history, they always try to make the black man as the sexual deviant, as to the, the rapist, the scourge, right? But they just totally forgot about the white men, okay? They totally forgot about them, even though they have big pedophile rings, sex trafficking rings, etc. Leave them alone and going after them. Now you hear all this domestic terrorism talk and you hear all this talk about white supremacists and their domestic terrorists in which they are. But let me tell you something, this system of racism and white supremacy do not like to criminalize their own. I'm telling you, and, and, and when it happens, don't say nobody told you. They are going to say that y'all in these gangs, they're going to start calling y'all domestic terrorists and they're going to start picking y'all up under terrorism charges and locking y'all up. I'm telling you, if you start being associating with these gangs, uh, knowing this person, knowing that person, they're going to start scooping all y'all up on terrorism charges. Understand that they're not going to just criminalize the white supremacist male. They're not going to do that because you are the number one target in this country, black man. So find you a legal hustle. Stop killing each other in the streets over stupidity because you don't own no block. These white folks own the blocks. They come in there, they want to gentrify to get you out of there. So you don't own nothing, you don't run nothing. You don't own no hood. Show me the title deed in your hand, then I can believe that you own the hood. You don't. I'm just trying to be the, the watchman that's telling you this is coming down the line. I know these people. I study them. That's what I do. I study this system. It's my job. And I'm telling you, they're not going to just call them domestic terrorists and leave you alone. Trust me on this. I'm warning you, get you a legal hustle. This world, you don't need to go to college to get a legal hustle. There's so many ways to make money. You don't even need a, a traditional job to make money anymore. It's so much money to be getting online now. Get it but get off off them streets. Stop associating with them people like that because they're going to try to start calling y'all domestic terrorists. And then, you know, they're going to go overboard on y'all. They're not going to go overboard on, on, on the Connors and the Dillons of the world. They go overboard on you. They're not going to round up all these white supremacist groups and say they're terrorist organizations, but they're going to do that to you. Trust me on that. I am warning you. But as for Ethan, he caught up. Stop it. If you know someone is crazy, and, and, and demented and narcissistic and evil. And you know, they doing this Why are you being around them. Now it makes me wonder about you too, Ethan, but certain people I can't be around. I couldn't be around a guy like that. 
I couldn't. I'm sure they're not buying no guns for nobody. Buy your own guns. But understand, don't get caught up with other people and they miss. Because when they do something and things go down, them folks are coming after you. But leave me a comment, let me know what you think about the update to this particular story. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to say this guy, Ethan, was an accessory to domestic terrorism. Wouldn't surprise me because they love to throw the book at, at, at black folks. They do.